I'm Cliff Ruddle, and I'm really happy to be with you today and spend a little bit of time learning more about endodontics together. We shape canals so that we can fill those shape canals with a sufficient reservoir of reagent that upon activation can be exchanged into the instrumentable and the uninstrumentable portion of the root canal system. Let's look at shaping this canal with ProTaper Gold. Remember, shaping is the most straightforward procedure probably in clinical endodontics, but that's after glide path management. Now, why do I use a plastic block? A plastic block allows us to look at an instrument and observe when it cuts, where it cuts, and how much it cuts. We could use an extracted tooth, but you would see nothing. Many instructors like to show extracted teeth or they like to show a 3D printed model. And those are really good exercises for colleagues around the world to utilize in workshop participation. But this is a very good challenge because it is a multiplanar canal. Plastic is harder than dentin to work in. Plastic is soft. So because it's a little softer than the Brunel hardness of dentin, it's much easier to ledge or block a canal. So we're gonna to have to put all the steps together very precisely and follow them exactly like that we talked about earlier so that we can guide this canal shaping procedure right to its successful conclusion. So let's take a little closer look at what the challenge is. If we draw a tangential line to the first curve relative to the straightaway portion of the canal, you can see it forms an angle of about 30 degrees. And if we draw a tangential line to the second curve relative to the first curve, you can see that that's about 35 degrees of recurvature. So it's a good little challenge. Normally, we would clinically use a viscous chelator as we begin to do our glide path procedures, but in plastic, we'll just use 70% isopropyl alcohol. Notice the access is done, and we'll just use the straight international most utilized files, purple, white, yellow, red. That means we won't use SX in this case, but we would clinically if it was a lot longer block, and uh, that would really help us achieve length. So just use the S1, the S2, and then two finishers, F1 and F2. Here comes our tin file. Notice the rubber stop that's just a bit off the screen, but it's doing very small back and forth reciprocatory motion. It's not really making a big motion, just a small back and forth rocking. When you get that file down the canal and get about a half or one stop short of length, let's not reciprocate the handling more so we don't transport. Let's just slide in, slip and slide. By slipping and sliding to length, we are now able to maintain the position of the foramen. That was a critical objective in the Schilderian idea of mechanical objectives for shaping canals. This is when you would use clinically an apex locator or use a film to determine working length. With a known working length, let's establish patency. Remember the canal was patent before you ever started and it should be patent now, and to do that, let's confirm it. Move the file deliberately and intentionally to and minutely through the foramen and continue little short half-stop amplitude pull strokes, push-pull, 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 until the file is loose. When the file is really super loose at length, then the, the canal has been transitioned to a little greater than a 10, and the question now remains, is it appropriate to use a mechanical file in this canal? Is it safe? That's the bottom line. Is it safe? And to determine if we can use a mechanical file, we need to confirm not only patency, but then we need to verify the glide path. To verify the glide path, pull the file back about one stop and see if you can slip and slide back to length. Now pull the file back to three or four stops and see if you can slip and slide over the apical one-third of that canal. If you can slip, slide, and glide over the apical one-third of the canal in a bath of fresh reagent, we can start using ProGlider. Remember, ProGlider replaces the stainless steel 15. Let the ProGlider run towards length. If there's a little bit of resistance to run, brush, 
Notice where the file is cutting. It's cutting away from its length. It's pre-enlarging the canal. You can take a second pass to better and more effectively load the blades with debris and auger the debris out of the canal. When you pull any mechanical file out of a canal, it's important to irrigate. Irrigate kicks out gross debris. Then we can recapitulate with a tin file, or guess what? You can recapitulate with the Pro Glider. Either one of those instruments is able to break up debris and move debris into solution so that it's loose debris, and that loose debris then can be liberated from the canal when we re-irrigate. Notice the canan cannula doesn't need to go deep. It only needs to go about to the middle one-third of the entire working length and I can irrigate, vacuum, irrigate, vacuum, irrigate, vacuum. I'm using a 25 cent syringe with a 29 gauge cannula. Here comes S1. You don't have to know much about its geometries. It's purple. We know around the world the ISO color to follow is purple, white, yellow, red, and so on and so forth. Notice I'm brushing. This canal is being pre-enlarged dominantly in its coronal one-third. Notice where the file is loading up. Again, the tip of S1 is just following the slide path that was created by the tin and the Pro Glider. Once we've achieved length, we can remove the file and guess what? Again, let's irrigate. A lot of colleagues skip these little steps and that's how we get into trouble. Again, we can recapitulate with either the tin file or even use a much more flexible Pro Glider to just clear the canal, break up debris, move it into solution so that we can re-irrigate. Again, irrigate, vacuum, irrigate, vacuum. You can bump these solutions and notice we're moving solutions much deeper than the placement of the cannula. Here comes the S2. It'll carry a shaping wave progressively deeper into the canal and it'll work primarily in the middle one-third. Again, the tip of the file is dominantly loose and the shaping is continuing. Again, irrigate, recapitulate, and re-irrigate. I'm using a needle or a cannula that is cut 90 degrees to its long axis. That means I can vacuum. I can bump solutions. Watch, irrigate, vacuum, irrigate, vacuum. I can actually move solutions many, many millimeters apical to the position of the cannula. This is a real advantage in irrigation procedures. Our first finisher is a 2007. It's F1. Notice it's loading up right towards its terminal blades and it can walk down pretty easy, crawl around curvature and achieve length. And again we have the usual assignment of irrigate, recapitulate, and re-irrigate. I'm again emphasizing that we could recapitulate even with an endoactivator as a third idea. So we've talked about a stainless steel tin file and a pro glider. Here is a polymer, non-cutting, highly flexible tip that can rapidly move debris into solution and very effectively clear the canal so that we can irrigate a little bit more effectively. Look at these files when they come out, especially the finishers, and see where they're cutting. We want to see debris on the more terminal blades of a file which indicates that file just cut its shape in the apical one-third. It would be needless to continue going through a higher level of files and expanding the diameter if the file is loaded. If it's loaded, we've just cut its shape and it's done. Again, you can recapitulate this time with an endoactivator, break up debris, move it into solution. Notice how clean the canal gets rapidly by just following the endoactivator in and agitating the solution.